Ah, oh, hi there guys. Thank you for joining me. I have a delivery here. An Amazon delivery. I wonder what's inside. Well, well, well. I seem to have some Star Trek USB to serial adapters. I have uh, five of those and I will need one perhaps for this video. And I have some serial cables, some uh, straight through serial cables, Star Trek. And uh, I have five of those, and I guess I'll again need one for this video. Also, I will be honest with you, I do have some yourcablestore.com null modem adapters, which I actually hadn't originally bought and had to add to my order because I didn't read the instructions properly and didn't realise that I needed a null modem cable for uh, what I was going to be doing. And so when I initially went to do this video and get set up, uh, nothing actually worked. So, um, anyway, it will now work, which is good. So, I hear you ask, what am I going to be plugging this null modem cable into? Well, I'm going to be plugging this null modem cable into a PC Engine's APU2. I am uh, embarking on a lovely new project that uh, will require the use of some kind of low-powered small uh, appliance with a decent amount of memory and uh, a decent amount of networking capability and uh, yes this is this is the device that I'm currently evaluating and uh, hoping to work with so without further ado guys let's go and set up a PC Engine's APU2 here we have our trusty PC Engine's APU2 box the very first thing we're going to do is to take the top of the case off assisted by our trusty compact screwdriver. Okay, now that we've done that, let's open her up. Here it is. So what do we see? Uh, so on the top of the board we have an MSATA and a couple of PCIe slots. Um, we have a SD card slot. Um, on the other side of the board you would see the processor. Um, this particular variant of the APU2 has got 4 gigs of RAM uh, and it's an AMD uh, x86-64 processor running at 1 gigahertz, 4 cores. Uh, and then we have our 3 gigabit Ethernet ports. We have a couple of USB ports. Uh, we have a serial port that we use for setting it up and a power input which I think is a 12 volts DC. Okay, so in the SD card slot we're going to put a card and we have selected today a SanDisk Extreme 32 gig card. So we will pop that in said SD slot. Okay, and with that done we're about ready to go. So now we will put the case back on. Right, without further ado, let's get this connected up and get installing. I took the liberty during the scene change to take this uh, Kingston Ultimate 1 gigabyte SD card and put the Debian install image on there. I just did it on this Windows PC so I used Rufus for the purpose. Uh, the latest available at this time was Debian 9.2.1 uh, and I took the network installation version of that. So I placed this SD card in my StarTech USB SD reader, another StarTech item featured today, and plugged that into the USB port of the APU2. Uh, then the serial cable, as mentioned previously, I plugged that in there and plugged the other end into the serial port on the APU2. And then I will uh, attach my putty to that. There we go, COM3 in this particular case. Now, as it's a network installation, I will plug this Ethernet cable into the first port on the APU2, which is the leftmost one as we look on from the rear. And then I will plug in my 12 volt DC power input and see what happens. Here we go. PC Engine's APU2, 4080 Mega Press F10 now. 
for boot menu. There's our boot menu. So I can boot off the built-in SD card, which is currently blank, uh, or this uh, USB device. So we'll boot off the USB device. There we go. There's our uh, Debian install menu. I'll go into advanced options and choose an expert install. I am an expert. Uh, there's a slight variant here on what you usually do with uh, with an install on a PC because of course we're not installing with a screen and keyboard, we're installing with a serial. So we'll press tab here to edit the kernel command line and we'll add on the end of there console equals ttys0 which is the serial port on there, comma, and then the parameters of the serial port. So the PC Engine's APU2 uses 115.0. 200 bits per second, um, no parity, 8 data bits by default. A stop bit is implied but not explicitly mentioned. Okay, press enter and we'll get our usual um, boot. Here we go, lots of Linux kernel messages there. And here we have it, our usual Debian install the screen. Well, I'm sure you've all installed Debian many a time, so let's skip quickly through that. So at this point during the installation, we get to choose which uh, NIC we're going to set up. So yes, there are three. Um, IGB driver NICs in there and we've plugged into the leftmost port so that is the first one in the list. We'll also configure networking detecting link, there it is, waiting for the load address, attempting IPv6 auto configuration, it has the IPv6. Don't know why it's trying to configure with DHCP v6, I'm fairly sure that my router advertisements do not include the managed flag, but anyway, I could be wrong about that. And lo and behold, after it doesn't find one of those, IPv4 via DHCP, network auto configuration succeeded. Right, let's carry on. So here we are at the disk partitioning portion of the setup. Um, we can see our USB device in here, and then we can see our MMC slash SD card 1, MMC block 0, 31.9 gig SD. So we'll choose that and we'll create the empty partition table of the MS-DOS type and in this particular case I'm just going to create a new partition that uses up the entire disk um, make that my root with XFS and I'm not going to set up a swap or any other file system partitioning of any sort. Okay, so we'll choose finish partitioning. Are you sure you don't want to swap? I'm sure. Are you sure you want to write it? I'm sure. Boom, there she goes. Right, let's carry on. So at this point we need to say network mirror to install from. So we'll just take the default Debian UK mirror and uh, that will then pull down from the network the remaining packages to complete this installation. We'll choose to install Grub into the MBR on MMC block zero. And that's about us done. Installation complete. So, we'll hit enter and boot up into our newly installed uh, Debian environment, hopefully all being well. Take out that uh, installation media. Restarting system, there we are. BC Engine's APU2, 4080 meg RAM. We won't press anything to enter the boot menu, there we go. And there's our grub screen uh, with Debian selected. And uh, there's our boot, loading Linux 4.9.0 dash 4 dash AMD 64. Loading in LD. And hopefully, 
in a few moments, we should see a login screen. There it is. Log in. Ah, oh, Rich. Log in. There we go. One Debian install done on the APU2. Joy. And with seven more APU2s on order, I imagine my lab is about to become a veritable banquet of advanced Linux networking. Well guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it informative and useful, as usual. I do invite you to comment below, and I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. But until then guys, I bid you goodbye.